Hello and welcome back to HCS Weekly. I'm your host, Shyway. And guys, you gotta love that trash talk. They don't make it like they used to. Dude, I think Walshy has to be my favorite. Like some of the stuff he says is so cringy, but I have mad respect because he commits to it. He keeps a straight face the entire time. And apparently the guy smells like Old Spice as well. I mean, you can't go wrong. Anyway, guys, we got a lot going on in the world of competitive Halo. Of course, UGC St. Louis sells 128 passes, biggest event around town right now. And of course, if you stick around to the end of the show, you can get Get a VIP pass. Tony, put up the graphic. There you go. The VIP pass. And that is not a team pass, guys. It's a VIP pass. This comes with some goodies, some merch, some access to the event. Either way, a really exciting thing to take advantage of. And of course, let's get on with our interview for today. I'm so excited to bring the guest on. This man is incredibly talented at Halo, an ex-pro in his prime. I would say he's one of the biggest, one of the best players to pick up the sticks. Let me welcome Richie Hines to the show. Sweet. What an honor. How's it going, dude? <laughs> <laughs> no problem, man. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? Man, it's true. It's true. We're gonna go over it. Believe me. Like once we get once we get to these questions, we already talked about some of them. You got you got some oh, amazing no. standings as a competitive player, and and you know you, you deserve the clout. Um, but let's start with how's it going, man? How's your day been so far? <clears throat> good. I just got back from Vegas yesterday, so a little bit of rest today. Dude, you no, know, I'm excited to play some Halo tonight, but. We're so excited to just talk about CWL as well. That was an insane event, and we'll get to that. Yeah, but I've got I've got an order here that I want to go through. I want to start from the beginning, mm -hmm. man. You got an incredible career in Halo. You started in 2007, all the way back in Halo 2. So where did it all begin? Like, how did you first get into Halo? How did you first discover the competitive scene? Um, actually, when I was younger, I only had a PlayStation, but my brother was the one who had an Xbox. And one nice. day I just saw him playing Halo, and I was like, you know what? Can I try that one time? And I remember my first game I ever played was uh zanzibar one flag and nice. i played like for like 10 minutes and i was already hooked and i every time from then on i asked my brother whenever he wasn't playing if i could play and then eventually for christmas i got my own xbox and i just kept playing from there my brother's friends became my friends because i was so good they wanted to play with me and it got nice. kind of crazy and then i just took it from there <clears throat> i actually learned about mlg through the usa network so that was pretty cool too you weren't competitive with your brother at all? You guys didn't like split screen and stuff? No, uh, my brother was more of like a casual player, so um, he wasn't too okay. good. Even when I like <laughs> started playing with his friends, he's like, go ahead, like you are so good at this game. And then it kind of yeah. took off from there. Uh -huh. So then you, find, uh, you found out about MLG, what happened next? I realized that there was a competitive scene for the game. I started trying to play hardcore more often and like just going on the MLG Pro websites and trying to figure out when I could go to a tournament or when it, there are online tournaments and stuff like that. And honestly, the, the real way to go about things back then was to make sure you went to a LAN tournament and performed. Yeah. Yeah, man. I got to say, like, it's always nice hearing how people get into Halo. So you started with Halo 2. You didn't even play Halo 1 as your first Halo? No, I played Halo 1 a little bit. With, like, my, like I said, my brother had the Xbox, but we were just mostly playing campaign. And I played that oh, okay, multiple okay. times. And I kind of just forgot about it. Other games came out, and I had a PlayStation. Yeah. And then when Halo 2 came out with Xbox Live, that changed everything. Yeah. That's the thing. Like That was one time in the industry where I feel like Xbox was definitively the place to play. Like Xbox Live, yeah. the inception of Xbox Live and Halo 2, there was like nothing better to play in the market. Like It wasn't like Xbox or PlayStation. I feel like you had to be playing Halo on Xbox. It was insane. Nowadays, it's like everybody's playing PS4 yeah. and you know Xbox <laughs> is you know, slacking. I still, yeah, um, I still remember when I didn't even have Xbox Live. I would always just press it anyway because maybe it would randomly work. Obviously, it wouldn't, but... I remember when my brother got it and I saw how you could just play with other people online. I was like, this is something I want to yeah. do all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. So you got into it. So, so I got a, a long winded uh, question here. I want to get through, but uh, all right. So you Go start in competitive Halo 2. You, you get some top 32 placements. You get an 18th mm -hmm. place finish. You haven't quite made a name for yourself yet in Halo 2, but in Halo 3, things pick up big time. This changes the game. You kick off your competitive Halo 3 season as a member of Believe the Hype with Cloud, Nexus, and Mudvayne. Later, you move to Ambush. You play with I Got Your Pistola for a fourth place finish at MLG Orlando mm -hmm. 2008, and then you move to Triggers Down. This is the squad, okay? Ola, yeah. you, SK, and Hysteria. You get first place MLG Meadowlands 2009, second place MLG Columbus 2009, first place MLG Dallas 2009 and first place MLG Anaheim 2009. So this must have been one of the highest points in your career. Tell me a little bit about this. How did you get on Triggers Down and, and how did it all come together and what did it feel like playing at the top of your game when the competition was so fierce in 2009? 
Yeah, um, I'll start back in like late 2007 because the way I, I kind of started to get my name out there was through okay. free for all. Back then, okay. like pro free for all was also a thing next to fours, and that's a lot the of the way. pros. That seems like the way. Yeah, they all it really do. was. I, I was so thankful because yeah. a lot of players they're not able to do that anymore because free is a little bit right lower tier now. But right. uh, yeah, so I got my name out there through the like the pro free for alls, and a lot of the pros knew who I was, but I wasn't like uh like performing in fours yet. Then the transition to Halo 3, Exit Wounds actually gave me a chance. And okay. um, in that offseason, I was playing with them a lot. I kind of like realized I was like, okay, maybe I'm a little bit better than these guys. And then Cloud offered me a spot on his team. I took that. Uh, we did some damage. We, I think the place we made the most noise was San Diego 08 when we beat FB. And that's when everyone knew who we right. were. So we, we took that down was a the pretty big that... jump. Yeah, yeah, it was huge. Yeah, like, we from top 12. Right, like from Halo 2 to 3. Sorry, yeah, from Halo 2 to 3, it just felt like you made like a big jump up to Believe the Hype. And then, yeah, sorry, definitely. Continue with what you're saying. Yeah, <laughs> like, even even from Meadows away to San Diego, like, one event, getting top 12, and then 3-0-ing the team that won the event, like, final boss, who's getting first and second every single event, and then we just 3-0'd yeah. them. Like, everyone knew Damn, who we were boy. at that spot. And then the next tournament, I feel like we did something even crazier. We had that crazy comeback against the uh, Trey Rippin on Pit TS Game 5, where it's 47 to 37. And me and yeah. Ola kind of led to charge there. And, um, I mean, honestly, the way we got on Triggers Down, like, Ola almost got on Triggers Down in the middle of 2008. I think they made a mistake. They they should have picked him up there. But Ola was so such a good teammate and a loyal like right. person. He just wanted to stick with us for the rest of the season, which we did. And then at the end of the season, he got on Triggers Down without me. I think it was SK, Stereo, Ola, and Fear itself at first. And I guess they okay. were having issues because SK, the way I got on Triggers Down was that SK was just watching my VOD and he's like, holy crap, this kid's actually really good. And he convinced nice. Jacob or Hysteria, because, you know, Hysteria's kind of stubborn when it comes to, like, new players. But he convinced right. Jacob to get me on the team. And honestly, we went to a LAN, like, a couple weeks after forming, and we just completely dominated SQ. And from then wow. on, we were just playing really well together. Yeah, so I mean, like when you're winning these events, what's it what's it feel like winning like almost four events back to back? You get second in MLG Columbus, but then first and first right after. Yeah, like, Columbus was lame man. because do you remember how there's a land network? Uh, right. Straight Ribbon basically like banned us from the land. They didn't want. Oh, us okay. To go. I heard about this. Right. Because Joe <laughs> Fries was saying they started to have like a yeah. bit of a like there were politics to it, right? Like if you yeah, were in a bit. with the land network, you didn't. Yeah. So then people would get extra yeah, exactly. practice time. And, so you got banned out? <laughs> a little, just for one time. And I, I don't know why, but obviously, like, Stray was playing really well that event. I got to say it was probably because of that land. I still think us getting second that event, I was actually really proud of the team because it, it was yeah. hard to practice online at that point. Most people, most of the good teams were landing. But, uh, mm -hmm. like, we were able to get back into the 16 lands for Dallas, and we completely, like, that, I think Dallas is when we played our best. We just dominated everybody. And then Anaheim was the crazy... Game 11 with Syrup, and, which I think everyone yeah. remembers. Um, even though it was 5-5, we never really felt like we weren't going to win that. We were really confident how we were at that time. And then obviously, the next event, a whole different story. Yeah, man. Okay, so so this final event. All right, guys. And if you guys don't know about this, you're going to find out now. But your final event with Triggers are Down, Triggers Down ends in one of the most controversial, most ridiculous incidents I've ever heard in competitive gaming. All right? We've got a clip. It's in 240p, guys. I'm sorry. This is the best quality I can find online. We're going to roll the clip. Tony, show it. Seven got the flag out. The hysteria is going to make a simple return there, bottom B. And all four members dead from class. This could be huge for Triggers Down. The final flag possibly in the hands of Hines, and he's got all kinds of cover fire. His is going to pick up a kill on the respawn. Pistola's got one, and SK just picked one up. As it triggers down, slight fumble, no problem. No, oh, his button's not working. He can't pick it up. Oh, the game froze. What? And I don't even know what happens in this situation. The game... Rose. Jeez. Jeez. Yeah. All right, Tony, I think we've seen enough. <laughs> Make it stop. Make it stop. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. So yeah. that, that was like, that's four players down on Onslaught CTF. You are running that flag. You 100% yeah. have that cap, and that's the win. That's the series win. But you didn't get the cap. What, what the heck happened there? But 
I specifically remember talking to Anakin, who was like the league ops at the time, and he uh, said, it looks well, like there's, there's a 99.9% chance you cap that. But <laughs> okay. he, I remember that he literally said, well, Ghost just spawned their ace He could throw a couple nades and you could fumble and they, they still have a chance. So we have to do a full Oh my replay. gosh, this is the conversation that's happening, right? Like, <laughs> yeah. Like Ghost, Ghost throws Ghost wonder man. nades, so there's a chance. Oh my God, dude. That's right. the logic so they, behind the rules back then. Uh huh. Right, because they never experienced anything like that. Has that ever happened before? No. no. Never happened before. Probably will never happen again. Sucks to be us, yeah. I guess. I don't know. <laughs> so they run back the series, and you guys unfortunately lose that series, and you get a fifth place finish. Yeah, because at that point, you're kind of like just going through a roller coaster of emotions. Like, we. Like when you right. play a series like that, obviously we felt like we were the better team, but it's still tough to beat them. So when you're like, you okay, we, we just won that series three one in our mind. So we're kind of like mentally checked out. We're like, okay, we advance the winners finals. We'll play that tomorrow. And the next thing right. you know, they're telling us we have to play it again. It's like, well, we just beat this team. Like now we have to do it again. It's kind of difficult. And on the other side of things, classics like, okay, we got we have a second chance now. Like we, like basically yeah. should have lost that game, but now. The rules are giving us a free chance to beat them again. It's like a lot of momentum was on their side. That's actually such a good point, right? Because like the, the mental stamina that you would have, you're, like you said, you're checked out. You thought you'd won that. And then you're forced to come back to it with like you're, you know, you're running on exhaust at that point. And then these guys got a second yeah. wind and they don't want to miss that second chance. They're going to go in 110%. Exactly. So, yeah, it's just like in so many levels – so many levels that's unfair man that sucks so because especially because like that that just point in your career like when i look back at your career that was like you were on top of your game when when you split up for triggers down why did you guys split up by the way because you still i mean you got a fifth place but you still had a lot of you know great first place finishes and then you're on straight ripping and i feel like the uh -huh. after that situation everything was kind of weird um right like i remember i didn't want to talk i didn't even want to like do anything involving Halo for like a week or two, and I should have been. Jeez. I should have talked to my teammates more, even though I was kind of like really pissed off. I think we all were, and one yeah. thing like led to another. And I know Neighbor was constantly in their ears trying to get on the team. Um, mm. he got on the team for me, and then I think I went. I went to straight up in like a like a month later, and I yeah. do remember when I was at a a straight land. We were playing BTH. Um, I get a call from Hysteria. Saying that he actually, they're having second thoughts, and they they wanted to do me, hysteria, pistola, and snipe down. And okay. I, I think I said no because I was at the straight house, and I just felt fine with the team at that point. Obviously, in hindsight, yeah. probably would have loved to do that team. But I mean, that sounds like amazing. I always wonder yeah. about that alternate timeline where, obviously, what happens if the box doesn't freeze, or what happens if I say, yeah, let's do that team. So I mean, there's yeah. a bunch of what ifs, but whatever. Uh -huh. whatever man you move past it i mean you've you've had some great results since um even in halo yeah. 4 you had a lot of first place finishes too which was yeah cool to see. like i mean those halo 4 days were you know not not quite as as awesome as the halo 3 I mean, days but yeah i, mean, I don't really yeah. consider those like major win events but right still it was nice AGL to be able there. to win and also like i mean it was decent money it wasn't crazy but yeah 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 and then okay so let's fast forward a little bit you got halo 5 was the last game you were playing. And to correct me if I'm wrong, because the last yeah. information I was able to find about you competing was as a member of Straight Ripping, where you got fourth place in, 20, in the 2017 World Championship, which I think that was the highest placement that that org ever achieved in Halo 5. So amazing yeah, job there. We got there. fourth like um, numerous times. Yeah, that was the one time I think Straight Ripping was like the closest that it, it, it ever was mm -hmm. to getting to the top, where they're like, whoa, Straight Ripping's one of those top, you know, top three, top four teams. Um, and then you have, it says listed that you have a UMG Daytona event after that. And then I've got no info after it doesn't even say you retired on the wiki. Somebody's got to update the wiki. I don't know what you guys are doing. <laughs> um, so, uh, so what I want to know is, uh, what did you think about Halo five? At what point did you decide it was best for you to, you know, move on, take a new direction with your career? Um, I thought Halo five had kind of a lot of big questions. So, yeah. yeah, it's fine. Like Halo five had a lot of potential to be a good game. I think the initial settings were. Mm -hmm. a hindrance to it because we had a huge 2.5 million dollar tournament but the yeah. settings were not ideal to play or watch you had obviously yeah. people don't really like sprint at halo but halo 5 i think sprint was fine but having spartan mm -hmm. charge and ground pound and radar huge thing and yeah. i can't forget last but not least automatic 
weapons. Um, yeah, a lot of that going on makes the game. That's the first thing in my head is auto. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like all that yeah. stuff going on in the game. It's like, okay, well, if you're playing a team like Envy, like who was Hook, Snipe Down, or yeah. I don't even know who at the time in 2016. Uh, Nick Wynn and Ola, but, right? Hook, Snipe Down, Nick yeah. Ola. And you, you lose the initial battle. It's okay. Now they have those great rockets. They have Sniper. They have Radar, yeah. so you can't even like make a play. That's, and then on yeah. top of that, it's like... You have Spartan Charge and Ground. It's really that's why I feel like a lot of people thought in the beginning Halo Five was very snowbally. Like if you lose that initial yeah. setup and don't get the power weapons, with everything that is at your disposal with radar and autos and whatnot, you're screwed. And the best players usually win those initial battles. And then even if you're like yeah. a team like us, I was top four. When you're playing a top two team, you're still gonna get smacked. So right. I mean, right. I just think in that sense they kind of uh, messed up because there was a lot of hype at the beginning of Halo 5, and then it quickly died down because of the settings. Even with a $2.5 million tournament, which was amazing, like I was That's so grateful to be a part of it. Of money. Yeah, yeah it's, at the same time, it's just like, there's so many things we can do to make this a better scene now, and it took them way too long, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's actually crazy to think that, like, despite the, the lack in popularity of Halo compared to, like, let's say, Call of Duty or other titles, it had the mm -hmm. most prize money in any console eSport. I think at the time, yeah, two point five million. The people who were competing in that were making more money than they were making in COD and other other events. So Definitely. it was actually pretty incredible. And you're right; it took way too long to change the settings. What do you think of the settings they have now? What if they were to like start, you know, a competitive Halo Five that way? Do you think it would be a totally different landscape? Um, I'm not sure how how much different it would be. I think it, if anything, it would be a little bit better. I yeah. mean, even as they still have radar, I I don't know. Yeah, I still feel yeah, like weird. having yeah. radar would be fine. Sprint was needed in Halo 5 because of the map size and whatnot. Right. But definitely having no autos for a while, I think, improved the gameplay. And right. uh, certain, like, even lowering the ammo on, like, rockets and sniper, I thought was huge because yeah. when you give a weapon that's, like, 12 bullets of sniper to snipe down and then Halo 5, where the sniper is pretty easy to use, it's yeah. going to be hard to do anything. And even the rockets changing because less ammo and then the, I think the spanker rockets were just way too good. Like little yeah. things like oh, that. Oh, they're so fast too. The like they came out and shot yeah, way fast. Powerful. Yeah, hmm? yeah, yeah. It's, so I mean, it was... sorry, what was that? I, I was just <laughs> saying, like, yeah. I was just saying, like, it, it's just way too much for a good team to have. It's like, it's really yeah. difficult to go against. Yeah, yeah. It it created a, a hell of an imbalance, and it's harder for spectators too. There's so much more to just like process just on the screen. Yeah. So, uh, so, yeah, I completely agree. And I think even taking out the radar now, like, I mean, you know, we're kind of at the end of the whole Halo 5 thing these days. But even, you know, it would be Halo nice 5's... to see that game without without radar at all. I don't know, man. It's it's yeah. it's rough with Halo 5 because everybody says, or not everybody, but most people say the same thing. Like, Snipe Down said the exact same thing you did is that there was so much potential in this game, but it wasn't realized mm -hmm. because it, they didn't make the necessary changes quickly enough. And had they done that... I don't know, man. We could have seen a totally different title. Like, I agree. yes, I mean, the money was there. Like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I think then you know the biggest thing going forward is just how fast do they adapt, right? So hopefully, whatever right. they exactly. come up with with the next title, if if the if the adaptation is fast, they're listening to their community, they're creating something that's the most fun for for the fans. That I think we're going to be all right. But anyway, well. Uh... <clears throat> We'll move past the Halo 5 stuff and get to the current, the present day. I've got a question for you now, and this is kind of like a ripoff from the eavesdrop, eavesdrop podcast, guys. If you don't watch the Eavesdrop podcast, by the way, I'm a huge fan. You guys got to go check out the Eavesdrop podcast. It's freaking awesome. Uh, but the question is, who are you today? Who is Richie Hines now? What have you been up to these days? <clears throat> uh, ever since I stopped competing, I've just been uh, streaming and then doing the observing for Halo and now Call of Duty, which honestly is a lot of fun. I yeah. mean... It's uh in Halo it's a little bit more difficult than COD, but obviously I feel like I know the game better, so I can adjust accordingly. Right. But um that is something I really enjoy doing. I just wanna stay involved in Halo and Call of Duty and like honestly Call of Duty is really fun to be a part of too. So I just wanna stay involved in any sort of way possible. So doing the observing for the time being has been fun. I have something in the works hopefully for Halo, which I'm trying to get figured out in the next month or so. I I don't wanna I can't share now, but I would love to okay do that so that'll be really exciting but we'll see nice 
All right, looking forward to hearing what that is. But man, okay, you were yeah, yeah. at, so I guess I want to talk about Call of Duty a little bit because you were at the CWL Championship and holy crap, that looked like an amazing event. I'm so jealous. I got to watch yeah. it online. 200,000 people tune in on Twitch. I think like they, at one point, yeah, it like, hit that. just about 200K. It was it was at least 180K and like it, it was it was averaging just mm-hmm. up in those numbers, which I think was crazy. And then Optic wins, like of course, it's some kind of like scripted it's perfect. Finish, like. Cod's yeah, back exactly. on the map. Optic is winning. Like it's this is like probably the best mm-hmm. Call of Duty could uh, could experience right now. And I hope Halo follows suit with this kind of success. But you're watching all of this in detail. So h- explain to me, like, what's it like? Uh, you know, being an observer. How does it work? Can you explain it to people who uh, who don't really understand how exer- observing works? So in Halo, you are basically just choosing between eight screens, and you have all eight screens in front of you via production. And right. you just see who's in the best position or who has a power weapon, and you kind of like go from there. And it's pretty easy to uh, navigate. In Call of Duty, you can do everything at once because you have all the score streaks on your screen at top. You have the specialist at the top. You have the mini map, which is the most important thing. And I really hope they have in the next Halo. Uh, because even though I'm on like someone's POV, I'm mostly focusing on the mini map because like, I'm like, okay. This person's on my screen, whatever, but who can I go to next to have a seamless transition so that if they're in a good spot, I can make sure that everyone sees the good play they're about to make. Like if you see someone on the flank on a map and you can just go while on someone's POV, you can go to the mini map and go to his name and just be like, okay, this guy's about to flank two people on the other team. Let me go to a screen right now. Right. So you can create a story way more easily. Yeah, in Halo, you kind of just have to look at the screens. Where honestly, if you just had if you just had a mini map in Halo, even if it's just for the observers to see, yeah, it would make it so much better. Because you can like there are so many good plays that I feel like we miss in Halo. Like as mm-hmm. as good as the job Harry does, and like I do, I still feel like with what we have, like there could be a lot more that can, we could see if we have something like a mini map on the screen. Yeah, is that so? I'm assuming that's one of the things that you're mentioning here, Tony. There's a there's a tweet that Heinz had. Let's read the tweet out loud because you were talking about something called resourceful spectator mode. So he said it was so fun observing Call of Duty at the all weekend. Uh, it made me really hope the next Halo game has a resourceful spectator mode. Hashtag the dream. So uh, so coming into like Halo oh, yeah. Infinite, what what do you think that that spectator mode we need to include? So the mini map that's a, that's a great thing only for observers. I guess I wouldn't see how that would work in competitive Halo, but for observers to be able to see flanks and and plays yeah. like that and be able to be exactly. prepared for them, I think is huge. Anything else that you think is like kind of lacking lacking from the spectator mode that that should be improved i think something that the halo observer mode did have that was good was uh the like the weapons and whatnot for right. each player and how much shield they have you could do something similar to how cod has it now where you have four players on the top and the left four players on top and the right and you can have stuff like their kd uh their weapons um their shield and an objective time all that stuff should be uh presented to the like the fans at all times Really, and the uh, mini map obviously is huge because um, it'll make it easier for the observers themselves to tell the story of the game. Right, right. And then my favorite thing, well, not my favorite thing, but one one thing that really does make a difference aesthetically is being able to type in the team's names on uh, the Codcaster, and so you have oh, okay. Optic Gaming versus United, and then you can change their team's color in the kill feed. So it makes them a lot better aesthetically to the fans at home. And I think right. it's not the most important thing, but it definitely adds to the viewer experience. Yeah, like little nuances like that. That's really interesting. Yeah. But And then you said the the observer, like you like having the weapons and the shields and stuff like that. I think that was an interesting concept that they applied to Halo 5, but I didn't personally like like how it looked in the layout. And I felt like right. the Twitch chat said the same thing. Like whenever they'd throw up the observer mode, they'd be like, yeah, I don't like this. Go back to the player cam. I want to see the, the regular, mm-hmm. you know, view. So, so what do you think about that too? Cause it, there's, there's a point where there's just too much on screen. It's hard to process it. I remember I casted call of duty, like a cla- I casted black ops four a couple months ago. And it took me a while to kind of like wrap my head around yeah. where I needed to be looking. And eventually I figured out the right places to focus, like to just to recognize things quickly, but it can be a lot to process at once. So yeah, like, that's what one do you thing Halo said about the podcaster is like a lot's yeah. going on. It takes yeah. a little bit while to realize, okay, this means that, and this is a specialist and et cetera. But um, I think for Halo, there's a lot <laughs> less information that has to be like displayed. So like you don't like in the current Halo Observer mode, you don't really need their logos, like their emblems on the screen. You know, you just want mm-hmm. their name and necess- necessary information. Like the kills, 
uh, maybe how much of a spree they're on. And right. you can even fit that in like a smaller box. Like, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. The bare essentials, like, like get it down to <laughs> yeah. exactly what players need. And then, yeah, just kind of like line it up on the side. Yeah. Something like that needs to be trimmed up. Cause I do, yeah, with COD, even with COD, you get the hang of it, but it's still like almost overwhelming. It's just like on the, like on the, the cusp where it's too like, small. Like there are yeah. definitely things they need to fix for it. Yeah, yeah. So, but it's nice to see that they're making those strides, and hopefully, like Halo Infinite, you know, can follow suit. Um, mm -hmm. One of the biggest things that needs spectator though is Halo Three. Of course, we have the uh, the UGC or yeah, UGC St. Louis event coming up, which is going to be amazing. But Halo Three doesn't have a spectator mode. So, so what's the process like if you're gonna, you know? Oh, actually. Let me first announce it, by the way. I'll, I'll give you like the, the whole the whole announced spectacle before I even go into the, the question. Guys, throw up the graphic, Tony. Richie Hines is joining the cast here as an observer oh God, for the upcoming event, out. UGC St. Louis. What's wrong with that? You look great. <laughs> no, no, we're good. We're good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, I like the service emblem. You've got the the triggers down service emblem. But yeah, join in, join in the squad TV. for the uh, – yeah, man, for sure. And – and joining for for observer. So so then, what's that process like observing Halo Three without without spectator mode? I guess it's a lot more simplistic yeah. in a way. Yeah. How does that work? It's simple, but at the same time, you you just got to be always like on alert. You're like I said with COD, I'm I had the POV that I'm on in front of me, but I'm always looking for the next thing to do. In Halo, right, right. you have the eight POVs in front of you. Uh, you just got to figure out for yourself based on knowing the maps, like who's in a good position. And you just do like a quick scan of everyone, see like okay, this person's on. Uh, the other team's side, maybe they're going to get into an engagement in a second. Other than that, you follow the power weapons and whoever's doing the objective. I mean, it just comes down to having like simple like map knowledge. And after playing Halo for years, it's, it's like second nature to us. Yeah, that's definitely good to have. And then there's no way to back out with the camera, though, right? It's just going to be strictly POVs. We can't get like a, a heads up, you know, a view over the rocket no. spawning or yeah that would be so cool i mean I'm, I'm not expecting anything <laughs> yeah i'm not expecting yeah. anything like that to come to mcc but it would be so much cooler if like we could do what we do with halo 5 where harry's on the pvs usually and now yeah. i'm going around the map free camming because i mean we've okay. seen from theater mode in halo 3 like how good free cam can do like you see in montages how cool it looks right yeah like I've, there's crazy stuff that's happening in montages they've got like it's the same type of range that you get in halo 5 so if they can somehow I don't know. Like, I don't know what the process is to implement that, that in Halo 3, but I, I I swear I heard like a rumor that depending on the popularity of MCC and Halo 3, there's a chance they could consider <laughs> making there's updates. A chance, I don't know. There's a chance they could consider it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> they, oh, yeah, okay, so. You're right. That, that sounds horrible. Yeah. <laughs> that doesn't sound hopeful at all. There's a chance they could consider having it on. I don't know. I, I just said, think I, about I, it. I think like as far as, you know, refreshing – like, cause Halo Three, we've seen it before, but it's nice to have it in 1080p, and like everything's gonna be nice and crisp and clear, and we get to experience well, that hype once again, so which is exciting, right? So having that is amazing, and then having that that little next step, you know, where they add in the observer mode, and like, you know, it's done, dude. We we got modern day esports in Halo Three, like it's. Uh, I know, think even nice. another reason people love watching Halo Three is because like the aesthetics, like, you know, Halo Four and like Reach and H Five, they all had this kind of different design than classic halos like a lot of pipes and weird floors i don't know how to explain i'm sure everyone understands a lot of but you go back and watch like halo 3 yeah. and it's so colorful and textures are nice and i it just it's more fun to watch i don't know yeah it is more vibrant it's i think it's easier to just kind of process too like when you're watching it especially like mm -hmm. like plays that are very strategic when you look at a map like construct i feel like there's there's a lot like there's a big story you can tell with like controlling the top of yeah. the map and waiting on the bottom of the map for power-ups and like kind of a, you know all those different aspects i swear they, there was a, a like an event i can't remember which one it was i think it was like roy and, and lunchbox's team they waited on the bottom of construct for like minutes just timing out uh the players just because that was the best yeah. strategy at the time like you you don't see stuff like that in other halos and you know that kind of you know it builds a story it, it makes things pretty exciting so I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing what they come up with um but at this mm -hmm. point i'm also looking forward to seeing what the chat comes up with because uh like we said oh. on twitter guys we're gonna we're gonna open it up to chat questions and i saw some pretty uh pretty hilarious questions coming up on twitter hopefully we get to see some of those as well uh throughout but guys chat this is your opportunity to start asking some questions to richie hines here and uh let's see what you come up with tony <laughs> I have the Discord here if you want to throw me questions whenever you're ready to do so. Because I got nothing from you, man. Tony, 
Where you at, man? I don't have any yet. Well, send me questions, guys. <laughs> I didn't say anything <laughs> until now. That's the issue, too. What's that? Sorry. Oh, that's a good idea. Okay. In the yeah. meantime, guys, get your questions ready. In the meantime, we're actually going to take a look at the online qualifiers for the uh, for Halo 3, the, the UGC event that just happened online. And there's some pretty crazy standings to take a look at. We were just taking a look at it earlier. Um, Richie, we have, uh, as you can see on actually, oh, yeah, nice. You got it on screen here. You got status down, you got GMS, <laughs> Wrath, Anaheim pirates. Um, so status down, like unbelievable team. And it's nice to see these guys on top neighbor, best man, flame sword and ACE. I think like, that's not an unexpected placement, right? <clears throat> no, I mean, honestly, I feel like there are a few teams that I expect to do really well that didn't play in this, but as for who played in it, I think. The two teams I got first and second are pretty much as expected. I was a little surprised with the result, but um, I do remember watching. I was able to watch games four and five of the finals, and they came, like, status down, came back in both of those games, and I thought they pretty much, I mean, GMS had it. It was theirs to lose, and they kind of just handed it to status down. So mm -hmm. I'm curious to see if they both match up in the next one, how it goes. Yeah. Do you do you have any idea who Shelly realized DG Bob and Kyle are? <laughs> I don't know who these um, players are, but they're they're in third place. I, yeah, I've played them. Okay, so I've played them in matchmaking. And maybe uh -huh. not as a full team of four, but I played against and with them on my team in like solo queue. And I know they're all good players. And when I do watch other streams, I see them playing together and they've been performing very well. So I'm not mm -hmm. I'm not surprised that they uh placed third fourth. Honestly. I think I mean, it'll be interesting to see how things transfer to land, but I do know these guys have been consistently playing and practicing and playing well against good players, so that's only going to help them. Right, for sure. And then the next up, uh, Anaheim Pirates. These guys are creeping up, man. Like they, They've been doing amazing stuff, yeah. especially even, even in the last Halo 5 event, they did some great stuff as well. we got Straight Stick, <laughs> Ares, Commonly, and Assault. Nice to see Assault back as well. I haven't even seen, seen Assault. Yeah, I was going to say, Cleet's a good pickup for them. He's a yeah. smart player. One one thing I noticed about uh, watching Assault's gameplay, I was watching him the other day. He's got really high sensitivity. He's got like minimum fives on his sensitivity. Yeah, he's on five senses. Watch. His stream title last night was five cents all day. <laughs> yeah, dude, that's that's fast, man. I think the 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 thing about his yeah. aiming, which is interesting, is he he's able to like prioritize exactly what he needs to look at. He doesn't waste time in between. Like every single flick is like very precise. He's like he's he's like his placement with the reticle before battles are precise. And he gives himself, I think he gives himself like a little bit extra time to react and yeah. flick in between each each shot. That's kind of yeah. why I agree with playing on a high sense in Halo 3. Like uh I think four sense is fine. Five sense is great because if you can control it, you are able to have that awareness because it's very important in Halo 3 to be aware of your surroundings at all times. If you're playing yeah. on like three cents, I don't know how anyone does this, but it just feels so slow. Like, yes, your shot's going to be great, but I feel like reacting to certain situations is going to take a little bit extra time. And that half a second or second it takes you against good players is going to be the difference. Like, when you're on right. five cents, if you, like I said, if you can control it, you're like, you can do whatever you want. And especially with the flicking, you can literally shoot around walls if you flick your reticle like, uh, correctly it's crazy but it is a thing in halo 3 unfortunately right because of the leading and stuff okay this is something yeah. i don't even have experience with yet like flicking shots around walls i gotta look into that that sounds crazy <laughs> but uh but yeah, yeah like that's the thing with sure. yeah like the the awareness that you would have it's like way harder to control but that's the thing with halo 3 as well as you've got a slower shot with the br you have a little bit more time to kind of like mentally prepare yourself for that next shot so i feel like a higher sense makes sense in those critical 1v1 battles as well mm -hmm. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so we actually have some questions that rolled in here. I'll, I'll start reading off a couple of these. Uh, Tony, you didn't give me a name for the first question, like the person who asked. Just Damn. why can't I just ask the question? <laughs> can I just say it anyway? I mean, this is a tough. This is a tough question to answer, like right on the spot. Who Who are your top five Halo players and why? <laughs> uh, I wouldn't be able okay. To well, that's, that's not too bad. I mean, I'm assuming it's like all time. Um, um, yeah, I would assume. Let's say Arc Two, uh, Pistola. Okay. Um, yeah, it is hard on the spot after those two, but uh, Lethal, Snakebind, Roller Two are getting into that conversation. I, I'm not saying they're three wow. through five now, uh -huh. but they are definitely. It's to go through an entire game. I mean, Frosty included. Uh, just yeah. getting first and second, like it's as impressive as it gets. 
But there are a lot of players that played in Halo 2 and Halo 3 and were at the top for so long that need to be mentioned for sure. I just, off the top of my head, I'm not sure which name to give. Maybe mm-hmm. Steria. I mean, Steria was a decent Halo 2 pro. Um, very good at Halo 3. Um, but as, as we go on, like the longevity is going to be the most important part of this question. Like, you right. have players that were good at Halo 2 and Halo 3 and maybe even H2A, but then they stopped at Halo 5. Then you have players that were okay at H2 and H3, but then they're really good at H2A and H5, and who knows how good they'll be at the next Halo. Yeah, yeah. I think like Snake by Roll 2, for example, they've been playing for a very long time, and now they're like insane at Halo 5. So like yeah. they've always been great players, but now in Halo 5, like they're dominating. So it's it's cool mm-hmm. seeing them, you know, as part of that discussion as well. Uh, I'd say that's a pretty solid list. I was thinking Snipe Down as well. Snipe Down's been doing some awesome stuff in Halo. He's been around. Yeah, for I mean, I'd probably put Eric up there, especially with the longevity involved. Like, he's definitely yeah, someone I forgot. Exactly. But yeah. Yeah, like when, when you have that much time in competitive Halo and you remain at like, you know, the top of your game for the most part, like he's been so close, you know, second place uh, in the end of Halo 5 as well. But anyway, we have mm-hmm. a couple more questions as well. Uh, Megatron here says, your favorite game slash event and why? So I guess your favorite, favorite Halo game, game favorite event. <clears throat> okay, I mean, people love asking this because obviously Halo 3 is the wave. But I always say that on a daily online experience, Halo 2 is better because you can play any playlist and have a blast with your friends. When it came to competitive or LAN, I will take Halo 3 every single time because it was just a blast to play on LAN right. with friends. So it's kind of like a mixed answer, I know, but that's how I feel. As for best events, um, in terms of how I played and how my team played, I think... Uh, Meadows 2009 has a special place because we lost early in the bracket. We lost to Bleed the Hype in winners round two, three to one. So then we had to play in losers bracket. We had like some placement match, which was really weird that we had to play. But then on Sunday, we had to get up at 10 a.m. or we started playing at 10 a.m. We had to play for top eight. Uh, We played Ares and APG's team. We beat them 3 0. Then we had to play for top six. I forget who we played and we beat them. Then we played. Uh, for top four against FB, we were down 2-0 in a series and came back and won that in the most crazy fashion wow. on arrows. And then for top three, we had to play uh, Stray Ripon, who were the national champs at the time, and we beat them 3-1. Then we had to play Bleed the Hype, who we were down 3-1 in a series against already, and we won five out of six games against them to win. And then, and then the way it was back then still, you had to beat Instinct twice. And we beat uh-huh. them 3-0, 3-1. And just the way we dominated everyone on Sunday, I think Holy. except for Final Boss, was it was just really cool to like show everyone how good we were at our best. Yeah, like that's gotta be the best memory. Is like a, a loser's bracket run like that is insane. Like being like you're you know, you got your last chance to make it through and you just dominate the entire way through. I can't even imagine how that would have feel, but I think that was a that was a great example of uh, a mm-hmm. best event. Uh, and good point on Halo 3 LAN. That's the thing about Halo 3 is, like, apparently LAN is so much better. Like, Halo 3 LAN, people will say, is, like, the best Halo ever. And then online is just a different experience. Um, uh, Halo 2, between the two, I loved Halo 2 as well. That was an awesome one. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Halo 2 and LAN was fine, but that host issue was pretty big. It was yeah. a game changer. And yeah, Halo 3, yeah. obviously, host was, like, kind of, you don't really even want it. <laughs> mm. Yeah, I just like the outplay potential in Halo 2. I like that if you were like in a 1v1, you're down a shot, you oh. could double shot somebody. You could, yeah, like there was a chance. Like so there, there's so many situations mm-hmm. in Halo 3 where I feel like if somebody gets the first shot, I have to back down in certain situations. There's like, I'm not just, just not yeah. going to win that fight, you know? Um, <clears throat> oh, God. All right. So uh, <laughs> who's that? Is that uh, oh, that's is my that? cat. She loves oh, making appearances yeah. on these shows. Nice. <laughs> and I'm sure on the live stream as well. Uh, we oh, have, my uh, God. <laughs> we have Chico Tazo as well, who says, uh, would Heinz oh, rather 1v1 snipe down or 1v100 100 suds? Did you mean to type 100 twice there? <laughs> 1v100 suds? Either way. <laughs> I think um, I have confidence against 100 suds. I've never lost to a sud before. I think that'd At be a good At the same battle. time? At the same time? That's pretty intense, dude. I don't think that's... <laughs> I know, I'm kidding. But, um, I mean, I've never played 1v1. I think it'd be fun to play someone like Snipe Down. So. Nah, I liked when you said you could take on the 100 suds. So bring it on. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> got uh, Mac the Stampede asks, uh, how hard was it to break through the shade and get into the pro scene? Any tips? 
it's a little Ooh. different today. I mean, it's a good question, but that's the thing is, you already said it, it's different today. Because uh, back in Halo 2, like, Free For All was still considered a big thing. And I made my name through Free For All, and that's how I got my name out there. Right. Uh, nowadays, it's not as simple to just play in a Free For All and win it and be like, okay, this kid's good. Because not, not a lot of the pros play in those tournaments. Mm -hmm. um, nowadays, really, the, the best situation to do is play matchmaking and um, at the highest level you can. And then playing those online tournaments, um, trying to, like, obviously, performing the best you can is what's going to get you noticed. Uh, right. Getting the best teammates you can to play for, to uh, go to that LAN event and uh, perform well at the LAN event is the most important thing. So, because once you play well at a LAN event, people are going to be like, okay, that's, there's no way that's a fluke. Like, if you get, mm -hmm. like, top four, top six at a Halo 3 event, people are going to be like, okay, these kids are pretty good. And you'll start getting more attention and uh, more recognition, and then better options will open up for you. Right, so results is what Hines said. Get the results, guys. No, it, it makes yeah. sense. That's a great point. I mean, the other thing there's is, no, like... I, there's no easy answer to it. Like, yeah. I know people want, like, have a GoPro in, like, five steps or something, but <laughs> it takes a lot of hard work. Like, I was playing Halo 2 from... Late 2005, I became a pro in 2008. Like, mm. it's not going to happen overnight. you got to put the time in. Absolutely. That's that's so true. Um, and one thing I will say that, that you didn't have the advantage or you couldn't take advantage of, and I think people today can take advantage of, is just all the resources you have to make your own content these days. Like, sure. record your yeah. gameplay, Good try point. live streaming. And the thing is, is, it can be very difficult to play at your best and also live stream at the same time like uh, I'm, I'm not even a competitive player and i could barely play and stream without feeling like i'm playing terribly i don't know how <laughs> you guys do it so well um, i love playing in front of people to be honest. that's the thing too you know i guess if you some people like for example you know ninja who's freaking huge ninja gets charged mm -hmm. by having an audience like he plays better with yeah. the audience behind him so you might even realize that's something that you need as well when you start having viewers you know and that that can help give you the, the recognition as well so i would say making content even if you're just recording the gameplay and you have like the gameplay stocked and you can just throw it up on youtube somewhere or whatever it's like resume material you know on top of the fact that getting the results is is you know one of the the most most clear-cut ways i think you know making content is very important um okay megatron uh ask him legit how do you find the right sense <laughs> since the update with oh, a few gosh. options it feels impossible to find my perfect shot anymore for halo 3 uh what does he do to find the right sense in each gaming session i mm. get that question a lot unfortunately yeah. um i i think i'm the only person that hasn't touched a thing since the update i still play on default four sense i know a lot of people mess with it a little bit here and there i would say what you can do like go back to a default sense i would say and then from there change one thing at a time and see if it mm -hmm. you like it more or you don't like it more because if you're changing three things at the same time if you don't like it you're not gonna know why and if you do like it i mean that's good to stay with it but you're still not gonna know exactly what you change that's gonna benefit you so maybe change like the horizontal sense at one point see if that helps you and if it doesn't put it back then if you like the vertical uh sense to be changed and try that and then I think the most important thing is look acceleration because the more, like the faster you can turn around and react quickly, I think that's huge. I, I have that on five. I think that's default. I'm not even sure that's the fastest one. But, yeah, that's the default. Uh, yeah, okay. So, I mean, just one thing at a time. Like, just take your time. You'll figure it out. That's actually like a, a really great point because I'm not doing that. I've been changing all three at the same time and uh, it's, been a, it's been a tough experience. <laughs> I keep changing. You gotta I have controlled finding, like, variables. <laughs> yeah, no, that's that's a great point. Like, it sounds so logical when you say it like that, but I haven't yeah. been doing that, man. I've just been, yeah. I've a lot of people just want to be like, like, oh, faster this, faster that, I'll be better. It's like, well, if you can't control it, that's okay, but yeah. change it one at a time. Yeah, yeah. And I, I think, you know, on top of, you know, making that that step-by-step -step change, which is something I'm going to have to do now, uh, whatever you do change, once you find something that I guess is, you know, comfortable, just try to stick with it for a while. I think in the end of the day, you can kind of make almost any sense, as long as it's not like a, like a ridiculous sense, but if it's anywhere in that, that general range that pros like to play, I think mm -hmm. you could make it work if you play it enough type thing. You can kind of like mentally adapt if you just, yeah, you also can't just practice. change it based on one battle. It's like, sometimes you just mess up, right? You know? Right. <laughs> 
one bad battle changing like every you know that's actually hilarious in yeah. uh, in tournaments when somebody like goes down like they get bodied into 1v1 you see them change their sense instantly yeah. afterwards it's the best <laughs> yeah yeah okay <laughs> so uh <laughs> so these are the questions i have so far tony if you see any other questions you guys feel free to you know throw them in the chat i'm open to, to answering all those but uh i think we have another another aspect to the uh the show we're gonna add as we get towards the end yes. here we've got a, another yes. another uh, surprise appearance apparently somebody's coming on the show tony what's going on tell me what's up <clears throat> oh let's go what's, who's this <laughs> <laughs> the wild wonder boy hey on the show. Yeah, what's, what's going on, on dude? Uh, uh, thought I'd uh, gate crash the show. Uh, yeah, because I'm like that. That's the kind of person I am. Uh, I've literally just got done streaming some Halo Three, but uh, I've got some uh, exciting news to sh uh, to share with you guys. So uh, yeah, <laughs> I don't know how this is gonna work, but um, I don't want to steal anyone's thunder, so I'm just gonna I'm gonna leave it there for now. Go for it, um, man. Do hi, it. good good show, guys. I've been enjoying it. It's been fun. Thanks, man. Thanks. Yeah. Okay, guys. With with Wonder Boy on here, then I'm sure you know what's up. Wonder Boy is going to be joining the cast what? at UGC St. Louis. We got yet another graphic. Look at that beautiful photo. Oh, there's a picture. That's that's from the uh, the last event, right, man? You had a nice haircut. That that's the David Thank Sandman you. photo. I've been I've been going through yes, all sir. of his uh, his photos, and I'm not in any of them, but they're amazing oh. photos. <laughs> no, I think it's too much all of the last event, man. But I, I, do, I love I that photo because. I'm telling you, that's the most makeup I have ever had on my face. I swear to God, oh, yeah. that that picture is so high resolution. You can go on his Flickr and like zoom in. You can see every single hair on my beard, oh my, my mustache, yeah. like every <laughs> molecule of makeup that's on my face. You can see it. But um, it's yeah, really excited really to be joining uh, joining the team for UGC as an observer. That's going to be uh, really fun. I've been watching a whole lot of um, old school MLG, like Halo 3 VODs, and, and just kind of seeing how uh Puckett back in the day was using the switcher and like how he would try and tell a story using uh his pov switching back in the day so hopefully we can try and replicate some of the uh some of the old school mlg halo 3 vibes in the halo classic <laughs> in st louis yeah. but yeah man, i'm i'm pumped to be joining such a, a great cast already is i'm sure there's more to be announced we're back um, is, is amazing we're back baby we're back we are back <laughs> yeah how long have you guys been uh observing together i think wonder boy i think you started the uh the observing train and then richie heinz came on later yeah that's right i think <laughs> our first event observing together richie was new orleans right i think back in yeah. was it july um i uh, yeah. have been observing since well i put forward the idea for full-time observers ever since i started casting really because <laughs> i i, I kind of realized like when you're casting and observing at the same time i have no idea how Puckett did it back in the day by the way that man's yeah, just, uh, God, he's a legend every time i was trying to pick the right povs to switch to while i was casting i would stumble over my point i would stumble over my words i so uh -huh. um i i've been asking for dedicated observers for years and then i think it was the last halo wc season um mm -hmm. i think the orlando global open uh earlier this year in february was the first time it was ever done uh full time um and it's just been kind of on and on and off like observing analyzing uh but I'm full time observer now, I believe, for UGC. Hopefully, they'll let me sneak in a few casts here and there. For Halo 3 <laughs> yeah, I know please. my stuff, man. I'm pretty I'll get good. You up there. But, um, <laughs> thanks, man. I appreciate it. Uh, but I'll yeah, no, it's going to be fun. I can't wait. Yeah, man. Excited to have you. And uh, and yeah, guys, like that's 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 the big the big announcement for the show today. Both these guys joining the roster. We got an insane roster at this point. I think I think we're just taking we're just stealing yeah. all the HCF talent and bringing them over here. That's the way uh, to go. I'm excited honestly. to see you guys. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'm excited to see you guys in St. Louis. Have you been to a, a St. Louis event before? What's it like over there? Any any recommendations on? Uh... Oh, it's very cold at all times. Yeah. Oh, I live uh, in Canada. Really? So I'm, yeah, yeah, I was going to say, the... I'm, I'm about to be at home. Uh, <laughs> there was an event there in January for H2A. Uh, got to, and and for Halo Five. Um, they love their events in January. Got to got to shout it out to them. Nice and cold. <laughs> like it. Yeah. <laughs> It's gonna be a first My time for me. Week. I've always been kind of obsessed with that big archway thing that's in the middle of oh, St. Yeah. Louis. I don't know. I don't know what it is, but I want to get a picture of it for my Instagram. Um, okay. uh, yeah, I don't. Know. <laughs> I'm sorry, that I don't really know a whole lot about. Uh, is it is it Missouri, St. Louis, Missouri? Yeah. Is that sounds about right? Right. Yeah, I don't know much about <laughs> the state or the or the city, so it's gonna be a first time for me. Yeah. <laughs> All right. 
Well, sounds like it's going to be a good time. I'm sure we'll figure it out when we get there, guys. I'm looking forward to seeing you guys at the event. Uh, Heinz, thank you so much for coming on the show today and answering Anytime, all these man. questions. It was a pleasure. Yeah. No, it was a great time talking to you. You've got so much experience in competitive Halo, and it's nice to see that background with observing as well and get to know a little bit about CWL, man. Like, COD's popping off. I just hope Halo follows suit in however long. I don't know how long it's going to take. Until yeah, we, we got some work to do, but we can do it. <laughs> but yeah, this is looking promising, man. I mean, with this event with Halo 3, this is, you know, this is the most excited I think the community overall has been in a long time. And I, I think that, you know, if we continue to build up from here, we can see some pretty promising things in the future. So it's just a matter of time, guys. Keep on the grind and uh, and looking forward to seeing you at the event. Yep. Thank you. Have a good night, guys. It's not me as well. Uh, bye. <laughs> <laughs> bye. <laughs> Uh, man, we're still figuring it out. It's tough, guys. With the with the like timing of like online interviews are always so much more difficult for me because you've got to talk and then you have to like pause for a second and and you know wait to see if he's gonna say something. You don't want to cut That's each other off. Long. I'm sure you guys can kind of. Is Wonder Boy? I still hear Wonder Boy in the back there. This is this is another thing about online interviews. I I would love to one day just sit down on a couch and have another guy sit beside me face to face and I host a host a real talk show. Yeah. Oh wait. Bring him back. Let's do it. What's his intro? What you got? What you yeah, got, Wonder yeah, Boy? He's still no. here. I don't know, man. I'll try to reach you. You're like, I'll see you guys Everything, later. Everything's like, happening. No, last give me my outro. Yo, so, so Tony tells me like five minutes before the show starts that, oh, we're going to have a last minute guest on the show. And he, he didn't want to tell me who it was. Outro, and then I had to man. pry the information out of him. Like, oh, it's Wonder Boy. <laughs> and then I don't have any questions prepared for you. I have no, I don't know what to say. So I'm like, okay. And so that's the end of the show. Anyway. I don't want any questions. I just want my own outro. You were just outro and Richie, and then and then you were just like, okay, we'll see you guys that. later. And I was just like, what? No, come on. Like, I come out. I, 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 I take time <laughs> out of my busy schedule to make an appearance on this show. And I'm you're sorry. Just, you're just not even saying goodbye. It's fine. It's okay. I'm over it. No, don't get sad. I'm, I'm sorry. Fine. What do you? What do you? Okay, Wonder Boy. Thank you so much for coming on, and and I'm sure we're gonna have like a more lengthy interview, and we'll have plenty more to talk about. Uh, I'll I'll let you do the honors on on your uh, outro here. Ooh. It's been a pleasure. Thank you so much. Uh, I feel like you know we had a really long discussion and and, and got yeah. really in depth into the nitty gritty <laughs> uh, observing stuff. But no, I'm I'm just do you uh, do happy that? to be. Do I? I mean. <laughs> Listen, man, it's it's almost midnight here. Okay, it's, it's past my bedtime. Oh, I've got I got stuff to do. Uh, that stuff is sleeping. And I actually came yeah, on this stream and, and this talk show, despite the fact I can't actually hear out of this ear. I don't know if anyone saw my tweet earlier. I this ear is completely blocked. I hear nothing. No. So literally, oh, anyone yeah, who's just... been playing Halo against me today, if you've approached me on my left side, it's a free kill every <laughs> time because I have no idea what's going on. What happened to you? No, thank you, man. I'm I'm uh, looking forward to being part of the Halo Classic. What happened? I don't know. I, I was actually working an event um, for another game uh, this past weekend, and we have uh, we had for the first time I've ever used in-ear monitoring devices, which is like earpieces. And I think uh -huh. someone had like an ear infection or something and was using it before me because they've just straight yeah. up given me their disease. <laughs> so I'm pretty mad about that. <laughs> you can't hear anything. Did you go to a doctor? Uh, I've been using these eardrops right here i actually have them on my desk uh, i'm probably gonna put some in before bed but i don't want to overuse them because i'm worried about like damaging my eardrum so i'm sure it's gonna be fine it'll clear up in a couple of days i have an event this weekend i'm working <laughs> so i'm kind of hoping it does um, this is fine if not eh, we'll, we'll deal with it life in mono isn't so Jeez. bad <laughs> okay all right well man hopefully that improves and we want you in full health for ugc st louis man. what an so, outro so get it together <laughs> fix, fix those ears. Yeah, that's the outro i, I thank you so much i don't yeah I don't, we're, we're we're playing it we're playing it as it goes guys whatever it's it's a fun time it's always a fun time having you guys on no matter how it how it happens it doesn't matter but uh but thank you guys so much for joining me and i'm sure i'll see you guys at ugc st louis thanks Alex. thanks for having me <laughs> Okay, all right. It's the moment you guys have all been waiting for. We got a free VIP pass to give it away. Give away. There it is on screen. You can see it there. And of course, there's a code that's gonna come up. I'm gonna drum roll. Where's the code? Send the code on screen. There it is. UGC VIP. Is that it? That's the code UGC VIP. That's not even creative. That's not even slightly creative. All right, hit up ugcstore.gg and enter that code in as fast as possible. And once again, I always say it when you guys are trying to type in the code, but Mixer has an advantage here. I'm going to start the next show with the fact that Mixer has an advantage on these codes. I keep forgetting. I'm sorry, guys, if you're in the Twitch chat. But enter in that code. You can win. 
You can win yourself a VIP ticket. You can make your way over to UGC St. Louis to have an awesome time and join some classic Halo, some Halo 3. And uh, and I don't think we're going to be announcing. Uh, right, when's that? Show that up on screen. We got online qualifiers coming up, guys. There it is on screen once again. Plenty more of these. Had some amazing showings for some teams so teams so far. Some teams who I thought were going to place incredibly well actually didn't place very well at all. Uh, shout outs to Boo Dubu. I don't know what happened to BTH plus Boo Dubu. Those guys are amazing players and they didn't quite perform as well as I thought they would. But I'm sure they'll come back with a vengeance. We got a lot of great teams to look forward to. A lot of uh... what? Say that one more time, Tony. <laughs> Oh, yeah, for sure. Yo, you guys saw what was on. <laughs> you guys saw what happened today. We had two amazing announcements. We had Heinz and we had Wonderboy. We can throw up those graphics on screen. Remember, guys, Heinz and Wonderboy will be joining us as observers for UGC St. Louis. I'm looking forward to seeing these guys there. There's Wonderboy as well. And we've got the cast, guys. We've got the best observers in the biz, so you know the action's going to be incredible. Now it's just down to the rest of the casters, whoever they're going to be. I'm sure we'll find out. But that closes the show for today and of course we also have merch as well guys put that up on screen tony we've got the official merchandise of course everything that you buy here not only supports the show it supports me as well and once again i would appreciate the support guys so feel free to grab some of that merch it's pretty damn awesome you can't miss it so anyway now we're good to close we're gonna close out the show for today thank you so much for joining me on hcs weekly i'll see you guys next week looking forward to seeing you